All right, let's go ahead and jump into the notes. So the first type of non-Mendelian genetics that we will talk about is codominance. This is a situation in which two different alleles for a trait are both expressed. So think of two co-captains for a team. If the team wins, both co-captains get credit. So in this situation, both traits get credit and both are expressed. So let's look at roses. If we have red roses, we will use capital R for the allele because red is the dominant trait. But in this situation, white is also dominant. So we will also use a capital W for white. So you've got a capital R and a capital W for this situation, okay? Now I want you to think, if they are both codominant and both are expressed, what do you think a red rose and a white rose mated will look like? That's right, you will get red and white spotted roses. So as you can see, the red and the white combine to give you red and white spotted. If we are talking about incomplete dominance, this is when both alleles are expressed as a blended phenotype. So you're pretty much making a third phenotype. So again, let's look at roses as our example. In this situation, you also use capital R for red and capital W for white because neither one is more dominant than the other. They are incompletely dominant. So think back to elementary school when you used to mix colors and find new colors. When you mix red and white, what do you get? That's right, you get pink. So when red and white roses combine, you get pink. So let's look at this example. If red and white petals are incompletely dominant in flowers, cross a red flower and a white flower. So first you're gonna establish your dominant letters. So capital R will be used for red and a capital W will be used for white. Now let's define our genotypes and phenotypes. So if we have two capital R's, it's red. If we have two capital W's, it's white. And if we have R and W, we make a third phenotype, which is pink, which we talked about with incompletely dominant. So let's go ahead and set up our square. So here we can see we've put our red parent up here and our white parent over here. Okay. And then we will go ahead and cross just like we usually do. And if you look, each square ends up with one capital R and one capital W. And when you have one of each of these letters, we know from our initial key that that equals pink. All right, now you're gonna move to your check your understanding page on the opposite side. And I want you to go ahead and try this. If you had a red flower and a blue flower, what would a cross between them look like for A, codominance, and B, incomplete dominance. Go ahead and give it a try. If you need to pause the video at any time, go ahead and pause so that you can think before you keep watching. All right, for codominance, if we have a red and blue flower combined, we get red and blue spotted flowers. For incomplete dominance, if we combine a red flower and a blue flower, we end up with purple flowers. Here's number two. We're sticking to the same situation where red and white are incompletely dominant. Now we are crossing a red flower and a pink flower. So go ahead and set up your problem just like we did before. Solve the square and see what you get. If you need to pause the video, go ahead and pause it now to give it a try before you keep watching to go through the answers. All right, here we go. So if you set up your square, you'll end up with red flower as one parent and pink flower as the other. And when you cross it, you'll end up with two red offspring and two pink offspring. Now we're going to jump into polygenic traits. These are traits that are determined by the presence of many genes. This is often common in human genes. So for example, eye color, height, hair color, intelligence, foot size, and many other traits in humans are determined by their presence on multiple different genes. The other type of non-Mendelian genetics is multiple alleles. This is when you have three or more alleles that code for one trait. The best example of this is human blood type. We have three different alleles for human blood type, okay? And any two of those three alleles can be combined to make a different blood type, right? But we have A, which is dominant over O, and also B, which is dominant over O but A and B are codominant. All right, let's look at that a little bit more. 
So this is just a red blood cell compat compatibility table that you can see. So we have O negative, O positive, A negative, positive, and so on and so forth. Don't worry about the negative and positives for our situation right now. You'll learn a little bit more about this when you take another course in the future, such as anatomy. Right now, we're just focused on the geno and phenotypes of O, A, B, and AB. So here are your different blood types. There are a total of four different blood types. There's blood type A, blood type B, blood type AB, and blood type O. Now, each of these blood types can have a different number of genotypes. For example, type A blood type can be AA or AO because O is the recessive allele in this situation. Type B blood can be BB or BO because again, O is the recessive allele. Type AB can only be of one genotype, which is AB itself, because this is codominance and both are expressed equally. And then the last blood type, which is type O, will be OO. Because this is recessive, you need two O alleles to have type O blood type. So let's try an example. We're gonna see if a man with AB blood and a woman with B blood can have an A blood child. So first we're gonna kind of write down what we know. We know the man is AB and we know the man is B, but we don't know her genotype. She could be BB or BO. So we're gonna try out both Punnett squares to see if it's possible for them to have a child with A blood type. So if you take a look at the first one, we're gonna use a homogeneous or homozygous blood type, B, and then for the second Punnett square, we're gonna use a heterozygous, all right? So let's go ahead and try the first Punnett square, and you get AB, AB, BB, and BB. So if we're looking at this situation, then this couple cannot have an A blood type child. Let's try the second Punnett square. If we're looking at the second Punnett square, hmm, we can see that there is a 25% chance that they can have a child with A blood type. So now we must answer the question, is it yes or no? That's right, it's yes, but only if the woman is BO for her genotype. All right, you're gonna jump right back to your check your understanding on the opposite page. So we're gonna finish the rest of this page off. So we're gonna go to number three, all right? Now I want you to figure out the genotypes for these four blood types. These are the four phenotypes, okay? This is what is expressed. We need to know the genotype. So take a minute, if you need to pause the video, go ahead and pause it now so you can fill it in before you keep looking for the answers. All right, here we go. Here's what you should have gotten. For blood type A, your genotype can be AA or AO. For blood type B, it can be BB or BO. And for blood type AB, it can be only AB, and for blood type O, it can only be OO. Number four, can a man with O blood and a woman with AB blood have a child with O blood type? So let's go ahead and set up this problem. All right, so you can see we've gone ahead and put the man with the O blood type here and the woman with the AB blood type genotype here. Go ahead and take a second and cross this pennant square and see what you get. Is it true? Can they have a child with O blood type or can they not? Go ahead and pause the video so you can go ahead and complete this problem and then come back when you're ready to see the answer. All right, so if you did it correctly, you should have gotten the following Punnett square. And if you look, there is no possible way that this couple can have a O blood type child because their only options are AO and BO. So they have a 50% chance of having a baby with A blood type and a 50% chance of having a baby with B blood type. And that's it, folks. Now it's time to practice what you've just learned. You're gonna get a purple handout that has a side on incomplete dominance and a side on co-dominance. Take your time, use your notes, and go ahead and try out all these problems. See you next time.